In a previous video, I introduced you to Margaritaville Island Reserve, a new all-inclusive Margaritaville resort in Cancun. I showed you how very uncrowded it was during our visit in early January, since American tourists are mostly hunkered down at home during the pandemic rather than traveling. And I showed you what's so special about staying in a swim-up suite, with the suite's patio giving you direct access to the pool and to the swim-up bar. Well, I'm back home now, and I thought I would do one more video about Margaritaville Cancun. This time I want to talk a bit more about the food at Margaritaville. Also, I'll introduce you to the new adults-only version of Margaritaville that's under construction right now, not far from the one we stayed at. We'll talk about the entertainment they offer at night, and I'll share some little details about Margaritaville that I think you might find interesting, like whether this bathtub in our suite was large enough for two to share. We'll see if we can figure out what's odd about the loungers you see here, and we'll find out if you can spot the room key in this picture. There's certainly lots to talk about today. How about if I start by showing you the new adults-only version of the Margaritaville Resort in Cancun? All ages, including families with kids, are welcome at the resort we stayed at. And since so few rooms at the resort were occupied thanks to the pandemic, it really wasn't a problem for us. We only saw three families with kids the entire week we were there, and they were very well behaved. But if your idea of paradise does not involve sharing a pool with families, you'll be happy to hear that there's an adults-only version of the Margaritaville Resort currently under construction less than a mile away from the one we were at. I flew the drone down the beach until I spotted it, and here's a look at how far construction has progressed. Construction should be complete somewhere around the end of this year. Now, let me give you a little look at the inside of our swim-up suite. It was a really nice large suite, and that is definitely a benefit of staying at an all-inclusive resort rather than going on a cruise. You're not cooped up in a teeny little cabin. This is the bedroom area of our suite. There are sliding doors there that can be slid closed to separate this room from the living room area. There's a TV here in the bedroom as well as another in the living room. There was plenty of space and everything was decorated in casual yet classy tropical beach style. There's a coffee maker and underneath that in that cabinet, a small refrigerator. There were his and hers closets, which was very convenient for me and my wife, and his and hers sinks in the bathroom. The shower was large enough for two people to share and the bathtub was large enough for two to share also. This is the living room area of our suite with a comfortable couch and a big television. Through the windows, you can see our patio by the pool and there's a dining area where you can eat meals delivered by room service at no additional charge. I think we ate three or four meals in the room during the week we were there. The food was good, but the room service menu choices were very limited. I should mention that the week we stayed at the resort was the week they had that violent uprising at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. In a situation like that, where you're out of the country while something big is happening back at home, I was very thankful that Margaritaville offered reasonably good cable TV service so that I could keep up on the news. There were something like 50 or 60 channels, including ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News, so I was able to get differing perspectives on what was happening. They also had really good Wi-Fi at Margaritaville, so whether I was in the suite or out at the pool or down at the beach, I could stay fully connected at all times if I wanted to without having to use any international data on my cell phone plan. The best part of staying in a swim-up suite is, of course, that patio right next to the pool. That daybed out on the patio is a great place for snuggling, and when you come out of the pool sopping wet, those wooden chairs are a great place to drip dry. If you're interested in booking a vacation at an all-inclusive resort, or a cruise, or a trip to Disney World, or just about any vacation, I want you to feel free to use the services of my travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher. I found it's way better to have Caitlin handle all the arrangements for me rather than booking my travel myself. And I much prefer that Caitlin is the one who gets stuck on hold with some cruise line or some hotel instead of me. By the way, her services cost you nothing at all. Her fees are paid for by the hotels, cruise lines, and resorts. 
I'm way better off now that Caitlin books all my travel for me. So I'd suggest you get in touch with her the next time you're ready to book something. And I'm pretty sure you'll see why I like having Caitlin handle all my travel arrangements now. Let's talk about the food at Margaritaville. And I have a confession to make right at the outset. I'm a really picky eater. I have the food tastes of a 10-year-old boy. I don't like trying new foods. I don't like gourmet food. The kind of food I get excited about is a nice steak and baked potato or a Guy Fieri cheeseburger or a taco or enchilada or a plate of nachos. I like simple food, nothing fancy, and I prefer it in a really casual setting. Now, the Margaritaville in Hollywood, Florida excelled at that, as did other Margaritaville restaurants and resorts I've been to. So I was expecting more of the same at the Margaritaville Resort in Cancun. Unfortunately for me, Mr. Picky Eater, the food and dining situation at the Cancun Margaritaville is quite a bit different than the other Margaritavilles I've been to. Different restaurants, different menus. I would describe the food choices at the Cancun Margaritaville Resort as much less American than the other Margaritavilles I've been to. And I know that people are probably screaming at the screen right now, Jim, you expected American food at a resort in Mexico? Well, look, it wasn't just any Mexican resort. It was Margaritaville. I liked the food at the Margaritaville restaurant in Jamaica and the Margaritaville restaurant on Grand Turk and the ones on Norwegian Cruise Line cruise ships and at the resort in Hollywood, Florida. But in Cancun, it was a whole different dining concept. That surprised me. You know, if you go to a Denny's restaurant, any Denny's restaurant, you know what to expect. It's the same menu at all of them. They call that brand consistency. I expected that from Margaritaville, especially since I've been to five or six of them up to this point, and they were all fairly consistent. But the food situation at this one in Cancun was different. Just about every day, we ate lunch at Rita's Taco House, and I liked that a lot. It's casual Mexican food right in my wheelhouse. There's also a casual open-air restaurant called The Beach House, which I totally loved. That's the only one of the restaurants open for breakfast, and they make a really great breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day, and they excel at it. I also liked their lunch menu, so no complaints from me about the beach house. The problem I had was with the other two restaurants they had on the property. There's an Italian restaurant called Frank and Lola's. Now remember, I'm a picky eater. My idea of good Italian food is the Olive Garden. I liked the lasagna at Frank and Lola's, but that was about the only thing on the menu that looked good to me. But if your taste in food are more adventurous than mine, you'll probably like Frank and Lola's. It just wasn't the kind of Italian food that I like. And then the real problem for me was the restaurant they call Latino. They describe it as a fusion restaurant fusing Latin food and Asian food. Mr. Picky Eater was not happy about that. And what made this a really bad situation for me was that out of the seven days we stayed at Margaritaville, the Asian Latin Fusion restaurant was the only restaurant where you could get dinner, except for ordering from room service, on two of the seven nights. So that was no bueno, as far as I was concerned. If there had been an actual Margaritaville restaurant at the Margaritaville Resort in Cancun, like they have at their resort in Hollywood, Florida, with the same menu choices, which is what I was expecting, Mr. Picky Eater would have been a lot happier. Further complicating the food situation when my wife and I go on vacation is the fact that she has to eat gluten-free and dairy-free, but I'm happy to report that the folks at the restaurants at Margaritaville were totally happy to work with those special requirements, and it really didn't become much of an issue. We could tell that they had dealt with people with food allergies plenty times before, and they handled it very well. On a cruise ship, it can get complicated. They have to feed thousands of people, so they want gluten-free people to figure out what they want to eat 24 hours in advance. But at Margaritaville, they were already totally prepared with gluten-free and dairy-free options. We're going to take a very quick break, but don't worry, there's a lot more to come. I'll be right back with a lot more details about Margaritaville Island Reserve in Cancun right after this. My wife and I have a thing about macaws. We actually used to have one as a pet. We just think macaws are the coolest things. So one of the things we loved about the Margaritaville Resort was all the macaw artwork. 
Not only did they use macaws in the artwork on the walls of our suite, but also as we walked around the resort, there was macaw artwork everywhere. While macaws definitely occupy the number one spot on my list of favorite birds, pelicans come in at a very close number two. Now, we didn't see any pelican artwork at Margaritaville, but boy, there was no shortage of real pelicans to watch at the beach. Sitting with a view of the beach and watching the pelicans do their thing was one of our favorite ways to pass the time at Margaritaville if we weren't in the pool or having a cocktail or eating a meal. But while we're on the subject of the beach, I have to be honest and say that Margaritaville isn't on one of Cancun's greatest stretches of beach. Cancun does have some really great beaches with amazingly clear Caribbean water, but the beaches up and down this particular stretch of coast have a lot of grasses and seaweed. In these aerial shots, you can see all the dark areas in the water. It almost looks like there was an oil spill, but that's not what it is. It's just grass and seaweed. The waves churn it all up and it ends up on the beach and they literally have a crew that works all day long at raking it up and hauling it away. But there's always stuff in the water and even after raking up the beach, there's always stuff left over in the sand. So if your fantasy is to spend time in the ocean at one of the Caribbean's greatest beaches, honestly, there are much better places to go for that than this resort. But it didn't really bother me. I had a much better time relaxing in the pool that was right off my balcony. Speaking of the pool, I totally agree with the decision they made when they designed the resort to have the water in the pools be only a little more than four feet deep. They do this on quite a few cruise ships too. You can just hang out in the pool, relax and stay cool without having to tread water or swim. If you've watched a lot of the other videos on my YouTube channel, you've probably noticed that my wife almost never appears in any of my videos. Being on camera just isn't her thing. So it really surprised me and made me realize how much she was enjoying our vacation when she suggested to me that we put my camera on a tripod and use a timer to snap a photo of both of us together in the pool. That is a genuine smile on her face there, a smile that says, I'm having such a great vacation, I want a photo to remind me of how happy I was that day. And while I've got that photo on the screen, here's a pop quiz. Can you spot our room keys in the photo? They are hidden in plain sight. See those blue oval things on our wrists? You just hold that up to the door of the suite and it unlocks it for you. And if you buy anything from the gift shop, you use that at the checkout to bill it to your room. It's a great system, making it completely unnecessary to carry a wallet or keys or anything like that with you. And it's totally waterproof, so you can wear it in the pool. Put it on your wrist on day one and it's the only thing you'll need to have with you during your entire stay. Now let's do one more pop quiz. Can you notice anything unusual about these loungers by the pool? 
In this shot by themselves, they look pretty normal, but in this wider shot, maybe you can see what's unusual about them. They're kid-sized, only about three feet long. So if you bring young kids along with you to Margaritaville, they're going to really love these little loungers that are sized just for them. Every evening, there was some kind of live musical entertainment at Margaritaville. On most nights, it was a cover band, and I was impressed with the quality of the bands they had hired. They had a different band each night, and they were all really good. Most nights, they just played a nice mix of songs that any 50 or 60-year-old would know. They did have one country music night, and also one night that was all reggae. I didn't enjoy that one as much. At one night, they even had a mariachi band playing while people dined at the Beach House restaurant. Just about any time of the year in Cancun, you should be prepared for the possibility of rain. There were two days during our seven-day stay at Margaritaville where we had some heavy rain, but both times it went away just as quickly as it rolled in, and we were back in the pool before long. We always pack small umbrellas with us whenever we visit the Caribbean, but it turned out to be unnecessary this time because there was a very nice large umbrella supplied for us in the closet of our suite. Hurricane season is late summer and through the fall in the Caribbean. Climate change has caused stronger hurricanes to hit the Yucatan Peninsula. Last October, Hurricane Delta hit the area. It was forecast to be a Category 4 and ended up being a Category 2. And then just a few weeks later, they got hit a second time, and this time by a Category 1, Hurricane Zeta. There used to be 16 of these very luxurious daybeds along the beach at Margaritaville. Only these two survived the 2020 hurricane season. From a distance, this little pier looks like it survived the hurricanes okay, but when I bring the drone in a little closer, you can see the platform at the end of the pier got beat up pretty good. The pelicans still like hanging out on top of it, though. Okay, we're going to take one more quick break, and then I'll be right back with the conclusion of my story about our visit to the Margaritaville Resort in Cancun. After a week at the Margaritaville Resort, it was time for us to fly back home. At that time, there was no requirement for a negative COVID test prior to flying home, but I'm sure that you've probably heard that starting on January 26th, the United States is going to require proof of a negative COVID test before allowing people to come back after a Mexican vacation. Don't let that scare you off from booking a vacation at Margaritaville, though, because as of January 26th, Margaritaville will provide a free on-site COVID test to all guests in time to meet the CDC requirements for their flight home. And if you do happen to have a positive test result, Margaritaville will even provide free accommodations and meals for your quarantine period until you finally test negative and can fly home up to 14 nights if necessary. So it's a very generous policy in response to the new requirements. My travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher, can fill you in on the details. She's definitely the one I would recommend that you go through if you're thinking about booking a stay at an all-inclusive resort in the Caribbean or a cruise or any kind of vacation. After our stay at Margaritaville, we weren't experiencing any COVID symptoms. There were so few other guests at Margaritaville, and every staff member always wore a face mask and wore it properly, so we were very confident that we did not pick up COVID during our trip. But nonetheless, we quarantined after we got home, and after we'd been home for five days, we both got tested for COVID, and no surprise, both tests came back negative. All in all, we considered it a great vacation, one I'm sure we'll remember for a long, long time, it was such a unique opportunity, when I don't think we'll ever have again, to stay at a Caribbean resort with so few other guests. They have 146 rooms at the Margaritaville Resort. One of the nights we were there, only 12 of them were occupied. How often do you get a vacation experience like that? I'm Jim Zim. Thank you for watching.